a Monday. This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, we are live in Los Angeles on iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. One hour from now, where Colin was right, where Colin was wrong, plenty of both this weekend. Joy Taylor is joining me. Joy, kind of a shocking weekend for all of us. There was a lot that happened this weekend, uh, even after the uh, huge announcement. So let's start. Um, first of all, you know I'm a huge fan of Andrew Luck. Yes. I think anybody who watches this show knows. I watched him in college as a freshman and sophomore at Stanford. I went out and I told you that that year. Uh, I said after his freshman, sophomore year, I said, folks, this is the next great one. I don't do that with college quarterbacks. I'm doing it with a kid at Clemson. Andrew Luck was the first time I ever went on the air and said, okay, this is a Hall of Famer. This, this is what a Hall of Fame quarterback looked like. So it was very shocking for me. Chris Ballard's my favorite GM in the NFL. Uh, I try to talk to him regularly. Last couple of weeks, I couldn't get straight answers. I even called a trainer I knew in the NFL. Nobody could figure out the calf strain. So I know exactly where I was when I heard it Saturday. And my first reaction was, oh, oh, this is why I couldn't get a straight answer for two weeks for my friends. Shocked, surprised. Um, let me start with this. Media is not paid to be fans. We're paid to have emotional discipline. I consider myself a judge, not the jury, not the prosecutor. I want to be beyond emotion and deliver in chaotic times, even keel, stable messaging. So media, stop ripping indie fans for booing. The fans in the moment, they name their pets and their kids after players. They wear another man's jersey on their back. Then you put three beers in them and you expect them to be perfectly contextually nuanced with their reaction fans pay to be crazy i'm paid not to be i don't hold the fans to the same standard i hold media fans go to games drink before it drink during it are rowdy it's a badge of honor to be loud and a little out of control yes their initial reaction was unjust in my opinion fan is short for fanatic then they got in their cars Listened to Andrew Luck's press conference, heard him start to get emotional, read the two local columnists of note, Greg Doyle, Bob Kravitz, and that later that night or this morning, they wake up and they realize, oh, I get it. Folks, if you called off a wedding a week out, okay, even if you did it for the right reasons, even if you knew mentally and emotionally, it was good for not only you, the groom, but the bride as well. Her father-in-law would still be ticked off, and she'd probably cry. It's jarring. It's surprising. It comes out of nowhere. You think Chris Ballard and Jim Irsay high-fived? They were ticked off. They were shocked. These things make us very human. It's okay as a fan to react. I'm paid not to be emotional. Fans pay to be emotional. Media, lighten up. Here's the second thing. Quarterbacks are becoming like the Baskin Robbins, 32 different flavors mantra. We got the big quarterback. We got Big Ben. We got the small quarterback. We got Kyler Murray. We got the flashy quarterback who's got style, Cam Newton. We got the guy who wore Wranglers, Brett Favre. We have pocket quarterbacks, Eli Manning. We have guys who run around, Lamar Jackson. We have, we have outspoken quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield. We have stoic quarterbacks, Sam Darnold. And then we have this new thing, quarterbacks playing into their 40s, Tom Brady. So it was almost expected we'd have the opposite of that. Star quarterback retiring too early for what we were hoping for. That's Andrew Luck. Listen, promising career ends early is not a new headline in any business, even in football. Barry Sanders, Calvin Johnson, Jim Brown at 29. But it had never happened to quarterbacks. But if you take a step back, quarterbacks used to all sort of look and play the same. Oh, they do not. Big, small, stoic, outspoken, cocky, not cocky, playing forever and now leaving early. By the way, Tom Brady mentioned something yesterday on WEEI about Andrew Luck's early retirement, and I thought he was 
he really noted something that he understands how valuable it is. I think there's definitely a physical element. Um, I think there's definitely an emotional element. I think there's a mental element. There's everything, in my view, has to really come together for you to be, you know, the best version of yourself as a player. And, um, you know, it takes a lot of support. It takes a lot of people. And Andrew Luck never had those people. I've said this many times in my life. I am much more impressed with a child or a kid that comes from chaos and ends up with a really good, solid life. I'm much more impressed with that than the trust fund kid who ends up becoming governor or CEO. What do you come from? What do you inherit? Andrew Luck inherited a mess. The worst roster in the league. The organization's owner, Jim Ursay, always impulsive, uh, impulsive, then hired a, a general manager, Ryan Grigson, whom I half dozen NFL scouting sources could not believe got the job. Over the course of the next three years, Grigson only drafted three offensive linemen before the seventh round, and all of them whiffed. He had a defensive head coach. Bruce Arians was there for about 40 minutes, then left. Bad offensive line, awful running game, actually non-existent. It wasn't until year four some of the players started developing. But Tom Brady, and this is not a shot at Tom, walked into a league with the best offensive line coach, one of the best owners, a winnable dysfunctional division, maybe the best coach in NFL history, and initially great defenses for the first five or six years of his career. Even had a mentor, Drew Bledsoe, a very likable, decent guy to help him along. Andrew Luck walked into a tire fire and to this day going 11 and five in year three and getting to the AFC championship with the offensive personnel line and running game lack thereof he was surrounded by is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Grigson has yet to get a GM job. Chuck Pagano has yet to get another head coaching job. Tom Brady is the exception. One fluky injury in 20 years. Andrew Luck, once you heard the press conference, even those fans who booed had to hear this and understand, ah, I get it. I've been stuck in this process. I haven't been able to live the life I want to live taking the joy out of this game. And after 2016, where I played in pain and was unable to regularly practice, I made a vow to myself that I would not go down that path again. I find myself in a similar situation. And the only way forward for me is to remove myself from football in this cycle that I've been in, uh, com come to the proverbial fork in the road. Uh, and and I, I made a vow to myself that if I ever did again, I would choose choose me in a sense. Quarterbacks used to all look and play sort of the same. Times have changed. Let me shift to this. Andrew Luck, once we all took a deep breath, was mostly lauded by people in and around football. Owners, GMs, players, coaches. Almost everybody said, we get it. Are we ready to say it again? because I do not think this will be the last quarterback. Let me ask you, money changes everything, and I am in no way insinuating money made the decision. But if you're Cam Newton in week seven, somebody cheap shots you in the knee, do you want to go through another year of rehab? He has $100 million in the bank and other interests. Aaron Rodgers, Carson Wentz. All it takes, Khalil Mack comes off the edge, Somebody comes off the edge to Marcus Lawrence for the Cowboys. Does Cam, Aaron, Carson Wentz, do they want to go through another year and a half of rehab? We're paying players now big boy money. Their net worths are 75 to 100 million. Andrew Luck made 100 million in only six years. You can't blame players. I've said this before. I played high school football. Football practice is hard. 
Conor McGregor, after the big payday, doesn't want to get hit in the face anymore. Listen, yesterday, Sean McVay, coach of the Rams, called off practice. It was a surprise. He told the entire staff, take the day off, go be with your families. He told players, take the day off. Why? Because the L.A. Rams and Sean McVay sensed this two years ago. Football's changing. Players make more money. Practice is hard. Lighten up. It's very repetitive. I'm not saying the NFL will ever be the NBA. It won't be. But we're entering a new era. Richer people over time, the general rule is, they don't want to do a lot of really hard stuff. Basketball practice when I was a kid was fun. I love being in the batting cage in baseball. I hated football practice, and it's by far and away my favorite sport. Joey's brother, a Hall of Famer. Ask him. Southern Florida, August, camp. It's awful. It's awful for people like quarterbacks who don't get hit. Aaron Rodgers said last week, I don't think I have to play in games. I know the offense. We supported him. If you're okay with luck, and I am, then understand the new paradigm in football, especially for star quarterbacks. Rehab's hard. Practice is hard. There's more options. People get rich and don't want to do hard stuff. And again, that is in no way insinuating money made the decision for Andrew Luck. But I think it over time could make the decision for others. This is the new football. The good news, it's not going away, and half the NFL is undrafted. So there are players everywhere. More good news, looks like these college guys now come into the NFL, and they can play really, really early. So these quarterbacks will be replaced mostly by very, very competent guys. But money's going to change everything in football. For a long time, our entire lives, players played hurt, players played to a fourth contract, players played until they're hobbled, players were willing to gut it out and be quiet. And those days are over. Those days are over. All right, good stuff today. I also, um, you know, there was, it was interesting as I'm driving to work this morning, um, the impact for others in football as Andrew Luck retires. A shocking point made by somebody on our staff this morning about if you look at the AFC and quarterback play, it's really, really interesting. That is coming up 45 minutes from now. Colin right, Colin wrong. Jay Glazer, who last week knew something was up, will join us this hour as well. Better sleep obviously can benefit anybody, not just people, insomniacs who struggle with sleep. If you can go from seven hours to eight and a half, it generally makes you a more productive person. That's why Casper created Sleptember. Yeah, an entire month dedicated to rest and relaxation. From outrageously comfortable award-winning mattresses to pillows, sheets, and duvets, Casper is trying to transform and succeeding the way we all sleep. The perfect balance of comfort and support. Four layers of premium foam. Zone support designed to provide extra comfort to keep your back aligned. Also have bedding, bed frames, even dog beds. Celebrate the kickoff of September with 10% off any purchase with a mattress today at Casper.com. That's Casper.com to save 10% on any purchase through the 2nd of September. Terms and conditions apply. See casper.com slash terms. September. 